day. I'm Miriam, and today um, I'm going to be sharing a little bit of my thoughts, okay, maybe a lot of my thoughts about asking the right questions when we declutter. I kind of had a realization, um, an epiphany, if you will, about questions. And it's something I've been thinking about for a while. And this morning, I kind of had an epiphany. It's okay. Really, maybe it was just my brain finally putting the pattern together because I've been noodling on it. But I realized that part of the problem you have when you're decluttering is that you're asking the wrong questions. Or maybe you're asking some of the right questions, but in the wrong order. And so it just starts with asking the right questions. And I am fascinated by questions. If you know me at all, if you've been following me at all, you know I love questions. I even have a tattoo of a question mark. So let's just get that out of the way. It's what I do. I ask questions and I start getting curious about why things are happening. And so when we declutter and we start with the traditional questions or the popular questions that are out there in the zeitgeist, we may not get the answer that actually serves us well. So I wanna just go through a few examples of this so you can see what I'm talking about and maybe get you curious too about how to ask better questions. So when you start with something like, does it spark joy? You actually end up with a bunch of bright, shiny objects for you that may or may not actually serve a great purpose for you. They may keep you from following up on your financial paperwork. It may keep you from um, discovering who you really want to be because you're going solely based on emotion. I'm a big emotion fan, but you have to um, have your thoughts and your emotions in alignment for it to work out really well in the long run. If you start with that spark joy thing, it's all emotion all the time. It doesn't um, allow you to set up that nurturing and supportive environment. Um, the other question that started before the spark joy phenomenon happened is we used to always ask, do you love it? Do you need it? Do you use it? And those are problematic as well. So when you ask, do I need it? It puts our brain into possession bias immediately and you start justifying why you need the thing instead of actually listening to the answer of if you need this thing for your satisfying and meaningful life. So you, you're going to end up with a bunch of stuff you, you think you might need for that weird situation sometime in the future. May not be the best thing to keep for the next six years until that weird situation comes up in the future. So think about it that way. Do you need it? Not great as a first question. Do you love it is another one of those three questions that we used to always ask. And it has a problem too, in that many people struggle with discernment. Discernment is the distinguishing between things you love and things you merely like, or things that were given to you that you don't really have a feeling about, but you love the person that gave it to you. That creates a situation as well. You commingle all the love and all the like, and you end up with a big pile of stuff that um, there may be something better that solves that problem. There may be one of the things in the pile of, yes, I need it and I love it that works perfect and you can get rid of the rest. But instead, we keep it all because we think we love it all. And that's just not true. You can't love everything equally. You can love a lot of things. You can love the idea of things. You can love the people who gave you things or the people that reflect why you have the thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean you love everything in your life the same. Okay. Sorry about that. Middle children. <laughs> um, it just is true. You don't love everything the same. If you had to give something up, you could, if you really had to. Um, and then that th the other question with that is, do you use it? And that one is problematic in that at various points in our life, we used to use it, but do we still use it? Is it still relevant? Relevance is like the discernment of what do you love? It's really hard to figure out 
that frequency of use and is it a scenario that's actually going to come up for you again and rules like if you haven't used it in six months or a year may not be the best thing i occasionally get invited to a big party that happens only every four years i need a nice little black dress that i can wear to set event but on a day-to-day year-in year-out basis i don't usually wear something that fancy so think about it that way what is your life actually like and do you use it the other example i like to give with that is um you know if you're diabetic you need your diabetic testing stuff you use it you don't love it you technically don't need it you could fix it some of that stuff in other ways without monitoring your sugar, things may not go well, but you do use it and you don't love it, but it's a thing you got to do to, to do the rest of it. Right. So know that those questions, again, good questions, but maybe not for the first round of decluttering. And there is a piece of this that I'm going to go into in a much deeper way in the Declutter Masterclass I'm hosting on Thursday. You can find um, the registration details, get signed up for that at morethanorganized.net on the homepage. There's a, a lovely sign up form for it there. Um, it's complimentary, free. In other words, um, get you started on, on asking the right questions, which I will tell you in just a minute. Um, but I want to go through another example just to show you where this comes up and how it can work to your benefit. You know, a lot of people complain about getting into an organizing project and getting interrupted and then it gets all messed up before they can get back to it. And then they got to make the decisions again. Right. So the other way I talk about decluttering helps with that as well. It can be the thing that allows you to stay focused on the project and moving forward with small chunks so that when you get interrupted, you don't have to redo it again. And having said that, there's actually three layers I ask people to do. You do this easy layer first, and then you go back in and ask the deeper questions about love, need, use, and joy, because that's how you get the best result long term to create that supportive environment for yourself to create a new identity or re-embrace your existing identity in a new way that allows you to do more um with less and so there's freedom in that right and there's this control thing that happens as well right so let me just go through this other example it's fascinating <laughs> this is one of the things that never fails to amuse me when I find it at my client's house. There is a stack of paperwork somewhere in your arena. <laughs> and that paperwork represents financial things or important things, important information about your financial things and about your money. And you're afraid to look at it. And you tell me things like everything in there is important. I have to keep it all, but you don't actually know what's in there. And um that lack of knowledge is actually taking away your control of the situation and you are holding on to it so tightly because you seek you crave control uncertainty is hard and when you realize that that whole pile represents uncertainty about every level of not knowing what is going on on that piece of paper not understanding how it fits into your whole financial picture not understanding how it piled up this quickly in the first place because you didn't set up a system and you wanted to do it perfect. And so it didn't happen. And now that pile just represents failure. And yet, because you're uncertain, you don't fix it. You just leave it there and you tell me it's important and you can deal with it, but you don't. So one day you spread it all out and you start doing things and then you get frustrated or interrupted and it all gets scooped back up and it gets set down again to feel bad about and not quite understand and not really control and yet by not going through it you are getting, you are keeping control over the fact that it is there somewhere all the important information you need is in that pile you're just not quite sure where but you will tell me that you know everything in that pile until i flip it over and ask you to tell me what's in that pile and then we're going to excavate it and find out if it's true 
And many things will be true that you do know that are in that pile, but we will also run across a cap candy wrapper, almost always some sort of candy wrapper, almost always some sort of napkin from eating a snack while you were going through the paperwork the last time. Um, there's always empty envelopes. There's always um, packaging from office supplies. There is often things that have expired, coupons and stuff like that. So you are not actually in control until you look at your things, every single thing. And if you start by just getting rid of the super easy things like the candy wrapper and the used napkin that actually you do know aren't important, there's less and less of the, I don't know what that is in the pile. And you can keep whittling it down slowly, but surely faster and faster as you get better at asking these questions. And you might be wondering, what are these magic questions? <laughs> Again, you can find out more detail about those in the Declutter Masterclass, which I'm going to be running a couple times a month, but you can always sign up at the um, website, morethanorganized.net. And the questions are, is this a yes for staying in my life? Is this a no for staying in my life? Or is this a maybe staying in my life? Because I don't quite know yet. That's all. Do I want this thing in my life? Do I want used candy wrappers in my life? What does that used candy wrapper represent for you? And what, um, what does it say about you that you keep empty candy wrappers, right? That's that first layer of, of quick decision-making. It's not going to kill you to get rid of the things you know for sure you don't need, love, use, or spark joy for you, okay? Just start with that. And... I think in, um, in the masterclass, I will go more in depth in all of this, but I'm, I'm just wondering what you think about flipping these questions to something a little different. We get to joy by getting rid of the things that aren't actually serving us. All right. Thank you for showing up to more than organized Monday. Um, I would love for you to follow, like, share, tell all your friends, um, about More Than Organized Monday and More Than Organized in general, bring them to the Decluttering Masterclass. Could be fun. The more people, the better. And um, I can't wait to see what happens for you. In the meantime, have a delightful day.